Alright, well you weren't expecting this from a Bethesda channel, were you? Yes, we're doing a Halo tier list. Now, some rules for this, we're not including multiplayer. This is just the single player experience for these games. And we're going in release order. So, now, first off, we have, of course, the first Halo. Halo Combat Evolved. Don't get mad at me with this. This is going B tier. I don't know what you're thinking. How can you put that in B tier? It's the first Halo. It's, it's incredible. But we need a baseline. We need something to compare the other games against. That's why it's going in B. Because it is, it is Halo. It is the comparison to make for any other game. So it has to go nicely in the B tier. And it's the top of B tier. I'm doing that left to right kind of system. So next up we have Halo 2. Now Halo 2 I think is absolutely fantastic. Soundtrack, exquisite. Gameplay, great. Story, fantastic. Basically it takes... C and does it better. And you might be thinking, Halo 2, it's got to be S tier. But no, it isn't. It's A tier. Why is it A tier? Well, because Halo 2 has the worst flood levels in fucking human history. And they should go and burn in hell. Then, of course, we come to Halo 3. And Halo 3 was the first Halo game I ever played. For that reason, it will always be special to me. Halo 3 is an interesting one because it's obviously an incredible game. And if we're comparing my issue with Halo 2, about the flood levels. Halo 3, I think, has... It has the one flood level in the entire franchise I actually enjoy playing, which is Floodgate. Unfortunately, though, I prefer Halo 2 in all other aspects. So it is also going in A just behind Halo 2. Okay, Halo Wars. This is is an interesting one. I adore the Halo Wars games and Halo Wars the first has what I would consider to be the best cutscene in any Halo game. It is absolutely incredible seeing those Spartans with, by the way, the best Spartan armor variation, the Mark IV. Just destroying the elites on the bridge is one of the coolest things Halo has ever done. But the first game, you know, it does have some issues here and there. There are definitely balance problems. But, you know, despite all of that, I adore this game. But I wouldn't put it above Halo 2 and 3. I, I think I would put it here. Fantastic game that I adore, but as we will get to later, Later, Halo Wars 2 just does what Halo Wars did, but better. Except for that one cutscene, obviously. Now, Halo 3 ODST. An interesting one. I, if I could, I would put it in exactly the same place C is right now. Great game, new take, refreshing, interesting. But I'm gonna put it in A. And I'm putting it in A because it has one thing CE doesn't have, which is, of course, smooth jazz, which just makes it another level up. You can't argue with the smooth jazz, okay? All right, Halo... Reach. This is where we're gonna start annoying some people. This is where this is where people are gonna get angry. And some people are gonna be happy about this. Some people are gonna be pissed. Halo Reach for me is and always will be S2. It is my favorite Halo game. It will always be my favorite Halo game. And I know that this game has some issues. The multiplayer wasn't fantastic, but as I said, we're not counting multiplayer here. That doesn't matter. And the one argument I've heard against this game is is the people going into it were expecting sort of more in line with the lore, these kind of huge gigantic scale battles, but when I first played this game I didn't have any of that. It was just another Halo game for me to play and I absolutely fell in love with everything this game did. And the scene where Kat dies when she gets killed by the sniper, the way that scene is done is one of the best things I have seen in a game ever. The way you hear the shot as they're running comes out of nowhere. You just hear the shot and then there's a second of nothingness. You just hear the echo of the shot being fired and then the music kicks in and it hits so hard. And for a game to give that memorable of a moment, I think, means a lot. Now, to continue our theme of pissing people off, we have Halo 4. And Halo 4 is a game I really like. I even really like the multiplayer. I thought Halo 4 was fantastic. And I know a lot of people are gonna fucking hate that. But I thought Halo 4 was really really good. And in fact, just to annoy people even more, I'm gonna put it above ODST. Because Halo 4 gave me more of an emotional investment than ODST did. It gave me more of an emotional payoff at the end of it. The stuff with Chief and Cortana, I think, really made that game. And now, just to quickly get these ones out of the way, so we can, we can address the elephant in the room. The very specific tier that I have made. Halo 5. 
The thing about Halo 5 is it is not just a bad game. You know, it's solidly enough put together, but Halo 5 commits possibly the worst sin a video game can commit in my eyes. It is not bad. Bad game can still be entertaining. Bad games can be some of the most entertaining games you can play. Halo 5... And I'm talking about the campaign here. Halo 5 is just boring. It just, it just doesn't draw you in. It doesn't have an interesting story. It's just dull. You know, the, the small parts that you get with Blue Team are okay, but everything else is so tedious. And this game disappointed me so much at the end, because the only thing driving me forward through this game was hoping to see Chief and Arbiter together, and then they put them within feet of each other, and they don't talk. <laughs> It, the whole thing was just an absolute mess, and it could have been so much more. However, what we have next is what I think is the best thing to come out of the entire 343 era, and that is Halo Wars 2. And Halo Wars 2 is another S team. Because Halo Wars 2 took everything I loved about the original Halo Wars game and just made it better. And of course it introduced us to the Banish, to Atriox. It gave us an investment that you could have before going into Infinite to understand these enemies and what a threat they are. And it built up the threat so well. You know, a classic way to build up a threat is to have another threat that is terrifying, that seems like it's going to just destroy you, and then have this one come along and be even worse. And that's what the Banished are to the Covenant. And it's it's explained so well. And it has its own kind of bridge scene that the original Halo Wars had, with Jerome fighting the Banished in the ship. Not quite as good, in my opinion, but still fantastic. And Halo Wars 2 absolutely gets the S tier. And of course, we need the most recent Halo game, Halo Infinite. Now this one for me, is interesting. I enjoyed the campaign. I thought the story was it was good. It went in a direction I enjoyed. I think they had they had a lot to work on after what they did with Halo 5 and I think they've they've continued the story from that well enough. And I enjoyed what was there. You know, it was definitely an enjoyable game. Get to fly around the grapple hook was great. You know, it was it was just fun. And it was an interesting new take on things. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. And I'm gonna put it in a weird place. I'm gonna put it between A and B. And I'm putting it there with an asterisk of it could end up being S tier because we know there's more to come. And what I am hoping for, and I know a lot of other people are hoping for, is we're gonna see the Spirit of Fire. We're gonna see Jerome and Alice and Douglas. And, you know, that that is what I am waiting for personally. You know, may maybe that'll happen in the next campaign update. Maybe it'll be the one after, but that is what I am waiting for. That is what would bump it up for me. But as it stands right now, I thought it was good. I thought it had some interesting payoffs. You know, it, it was a little bit worrying that it seemed like, you know, they just killed off Atriox immediately, but then you have that post credit scene where you see him again, you're like, okay, we're all good here. What is going to happen? I didn't really think Eshram was that great of a villain. He was kind of interesting, but yeah. But I'm, ve I'm very interested to see where they take the story from here. But that is my tier list. I hope I annoyed some people. I hope I made some people happy. That is the goal with these kind of things. If you liked this video, remember to leave a like and leave your thoughts down below. Socials and Patreon links are down in the description. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.